Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chapel coming to you live from Primetime Shopping Network, Hollywood, California. I got a big show tonight. Take a look at my wall. At 7 o'clock, I'm going to introduce you to an artist I used to do a lot of business with, Gregory Wilhelmy from Roundup, Montana. I got a Peter Max canvas right there. I got some Fazino. Oh, I got a big show. Got a couple Navarro fishes. Got some Azulays. Got an explanation on Barbie done by Guillaume. And it's on my Facebook. What do you have to say about his classical comparison of Barbie? He went back all the way to the 1920s in Germany and who invented Barbie and why and how Barbie had changed before it was just like a little doll. It wasn't Barbie could do everything, but anyway, got all kinds of great stuff tonight. And I found out from a customer who told Ashley, and the customer is right, pretty boy Floyd Wilson is a Pomeranian. Not, what was I calling him before? Papillon. Papillon. He's not a Papillon. He's a Pomeranian. Very loyal dogs. Uh, pretty Boy Floyd is getting uh, a makeover on Friday. He's getting his hair washed and cut. Yeah, tomorrow Ginger's got to go to the vet because she's pulling her hair out. I don't think it has anything to do with Pretty Boy Floyd, but I better check. Uh, it's funny because those two get along all right now. They have, they've gotten along the whole time. But anyway, I'll tell you what. I got a Peter Max here. Got some Fazinos. Um, I'll tell you what, here's an artist I have not had on the show in a long time. Four or five years ago. Yeah. And I like selling his work. This is Raphael Abacassis. He is an Israeli artist. And this is number one of 295. And it is entitled Hi, C-H-A-I, which means life in uh, Hebrew. If you ever see people in the swimming pool with a little uh, mezuzah around their neck, that's the symbol on it. And a lot of high high highs uh, all around it this is number one of 295 Ashley can you show them where number one of 295 is because Raphael Abacassis is one of the best known Israeli artists he does celebrations he paints all the holidays for the Jewish folks in Israel. And this is number one of 295. A long, long time ago, maybe 20 years ago, actually, I had him out on one of my live shows. Smart guy, nice guy. Could speak like every language you could think. And I said, okay, Raphael. So you know Hebrew, obviously. You know English. You know some Spanish, you know some Russian. Do you know Pig Latin? I said, what? I said, ha! Bring me a guest that doesn't know Pig Latin? A Bay A Square. Yeah. And so anyway, I'll tell you what I am going to do. Uh, to have the number one of probably the most viewed Jewish symbol uh, is a rare honor. And I would imagine on a lot of sites, something like this would be up for 3,500, 4,000 or more. I'm going to put on 35 plus. You're not going to scratch off my Pomeranium and say I was right the first time? No. And you're sure 
Pretty boy Floyd is a Pomeranian. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever been to a Jewish service, Ashley? You ever go to temple? Yeah. Who do you go to temple with? Uh, my friend Casey and her family. True story here. All right, Wilson. I was, my dad was Christian. He would tell everybody uh, he was he was everything. He was uh, anything he wanted to be, but he was mainly from Kentucky, grew up very poor, made his money, and he was just Christian. My mom was Reformed Judaism. So I got bar mitzvah consecrated when I was 14. They took me at this Jewish uh, Sunday school to New York as a confirmation trip. Now, at 14, don't judge me, Ashley, and not you, Juliana. At 14, I kind of smoked a lot. Yeah. And I had a couple packs that I snuck on into the hotel room. But the only place, because I had to share it with two other people, was at night I'd have to get on, a, on top of the toilet, open the window, smoke and blow the smoke out. But somebody would turn or t TV, so I went through my two packs real fast. And I was there for eight days. By day three, I was out of cigarettes, Wilson. So I did the only smart thing I could do. I would go in the lobby at midnight, 1 a.m., and I noticed that a lot of the ladies there would smoke these long, skinny cigarettes. And they'd have a ton of lipstick on them. And for some reason, they'd only take two or three puffs and put it out. So I would just walk around. And here I am at 14, and I just kind of sit down next to the ashtray, grab a few, go back up. That's how I made it through the trip, Wilson. When I landed, I said to my dad, Dad, can I borrow a smoke? He gave me one. So, uh, but I quit smoking 26 years ago when my son was born. I just chew a ton of nicotine gum. All right, you got a $4,500 high. The symbol of life in Hebrew. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this so much fun. If you know or want to get somebody a Hanukkah gift for next year, or any kind of gift, watch this. This is so cheap, it's scary. $700 to open on the number one of the entire edition. That is a piece of nicotine gum I'm crunching on right now. And if you don't believe me about nicotine gum, just Google search my name, Barry Chapel, two P's, two L's, and type in next to my name, Gumball. You will see Ripley's Believe It or Not giving me the Ripley's Believe It or Not world record for the largest chewed medicated gumball. 195 pounds, I believe. And it all started with my little daughter who denies it to this day, but then again, she was only four at the time. We were on a flight, and I didn't want to put the nicotine gum in an ashtray. And Ashley, she looks up at me and goes, Dad, just think, if you saved all the gum up, because I made a little ball out of it because I didn't want to put it in the ashtray, she said, just think how big that ball would be if you saved it all. And I did. Now she denies it. Mm. But anyway, any takers, that is such a great price. All right. I am going to put life back on the wall. Oh, I got some great Gregory Wilhelmies. I got the first acrylic he ever painted uh, coming up. And I'll tell you what I'm going to move to now. Oh, I got a Fazino. And I got a, oh, I got a couple Navarro fish. 
But you want to see, oh, a big painting. And what kind of crystal is in this? Swarenstein. Say it again. Swarcy. Break it down into syllables. Ugh. Museum edition. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, three-dimensional Charles Fizzini is best known for his vibrant use of color. That's a three-dimensional, Wilson, not two or four. You know, I met Yaakov Agam. He is still alive. He's a three-dimensional artist. He freaked me out so much I couldn't sleep for a night. Yaakov Agam. I got a picture of him, too. Wilson, let me tell you this. Yaakov Agam is barely, I don't even think he's five feet tall. Little guy. And I'm talking with him. And all of a sudden, he looks over at me and goes, Barry. I go, yes. Do you want to see the fifth dimension? I said, yeah, I'd like to see the fifth dimension. He goes, all right, this is one dimension. That would be two. This would be three. Four dimensions would be all this. But do you want to see the fifth dimension? I go, yeah, I want to see the fifth dimension. So he goes like this with his hand. He says, now look. I'm going to show you the fifth dimension, but I'm only going to show it to you a couple times because you're not going to believe you saw it. So he cups his hand like this, and I'm waiting, and he goes, are you sure you want to see the fifth dimension? Because some people see the fifth dimension, and they go nuts. I go, Yaakov, I want to see the fifth dimension. You're going to go nuts on me? No. Are you sure? But yes, show me the damn fifth dimension. So he goes like this, and puts his hand over a box, and goes, are you ready? And goes like that. You look at it, and you see the fifth dimension. He covers it up, and it's like, whoa. You no, know, I, I, three or four other people that have seen it go, I don't know how he did that. You see how far off the canvas, I mean the paper, these three-dimensional, you know, it's, uh, yeah, an inch, three-quarters of an inch. It is stunning. Okay, so how do I pronounce the crystals, Ashley? All right, I'm walking over to Ashley. Swarsky. Say it again. Swarsky. Swarsky. Yeah. Can you spell Swarsky? Yeah, W S W A R B A S K I. S W. What comes after that? Swarsky. Crystals. And look what he put. Beauty for spacious skies. Beautiful for spacious skies. Uh, right there, Fazino. This is about the most expensive Fazino. I have some comps on Charles Fazino. Wilson, he's still alive. And he should be. He's not that old. All right, let me, there's my Peter Max, here, yes, 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 it is the age of Aquarius, the fifth dimension, he is right, maybe this is my Schwartzky, no, that's my Wilhelmy, um, most original Charles Fazzini, not original, but uh, deluxe editions with. Yes. It's got all the comps, everything. And I'm. it's got to be right under this one, Ashley. All right, that's Peter Max. That's Ashley. Here is how you spell Pomeranian, which is my Wilhelmy. Here's my Sasha Basari. Apparently, oh, there it is. Probably right in there. 
Now that's Zax. So it's got to be under the Zax. Yes. This could be it. I might have found it. No, I didn't find it. Um, anyway, these are 22 to 29,000, and that was five years ago. He is probably one of the most successful three dimensional artists of all time. Uh, I'm going to put the retail at 28,000 because this is the grand, is deluxe of an edition as Charles Fazzino ever did. It is beautifully framed and matted. you for the mini CD player. I used it, yes. But to travel, I, I thought you were Korean. And he, he is, but he took a vacation in North Korea. Why North Korea? Everything's cheaper? Because he's crazy, okay. All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Oh, this is too cheap. Way too cheap. It should be more. I'll tell you what, I'm going to give somebody an early bird special. Look at the American flag right there. I'll tell you what, this is too cheap, Ashley. This is a special early bird price. This is huge. 2500 to open. $200 increments. You are looking at a $30,000 Probably one of the most expensive Charles Fazzino's editions ever. And I'm going to let you open at 2500 If you are interested. Yeah, that's my major award in life, Wilson. Ripley's Believe It or Not, world's largest chewed. I made him put the word medicated. I didn't want to compete against a cheap gumball. You know, nicotine gum can be expensive. All right. No interest in this. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to move to. Anybody like Navarro? I have two Navarro fishes. I used to have three, Wilson. You know what happened to the third one, Wilson? He got away. In the rain, he just went swimming down the street. Yeah, these are mouth blown, hand spun Jean Claude Navarro fish. Two eight. So the red, white, and blue is two eight eight nine. He blew this in two thousand and seven. Look at that signature. All right, Ashley, are you ready? I challenge you. Challenge. Say what type of crystals these are three times Sporsky, real fast. Sporsky, Sporsky, Sporsky. <laughs> All right. There you go. He mouth blew, hand spun this in 2007. I call it the American fish because it's red, white, and blue. This is a lot of green and red. This might be the French fish. All right, and the French fish, he signed Navarro. I don't see a date on the French. Oh, not that one? It's the other one? This one has 2007. I think he just signed this one. I don't, I don't know. Let's sell the American fish. 
All right. Tell you what. I'll give you one heck of a deal. Jean-Claude Navarro died on December 30th, uh, 2000 and... What year was that? 2014. Um, he was the first man to ever make glass glow at night. Jean-Claude Navarro and his glass will live on for thousands of years. This is the only fish I have. $1,250 to open on the American fish. Mouth blown, hand spun. Are these what? No, I wish they were glow fish. Blow? Oh, they're mouth blown, hand spun. They're blowfish. Yes, they are. They're blowfish. And which customer called you and told you that my dog was a Pomeranian? You can't talk and eat at the same time? Is that what you're telling me? No, there's several customers that are saying that. Mr. Agent and my boyfriend Daniel said he's a Pomeranian Chihuahua. Pomeranian Chihuahua. Well, this is a dog we're talking about. This is pretty boy Floyd. He was left for dead at a dog park. He, uh, underneath his neck, you'll see a big gash where a coyote bit him and then shook him around, breaking five ribs. His cast is off. He's doing fine. He is just, uh, this was him at the vet. He's a little guy. He only weighs 12 and a half pounds. And this is, oh, come on. This is how they eat breakfast in the morning. That's ginger on one side of the kitchen. That's my hound dog. And this is pretty boy Floyd on the other. Pretty boy Floyd's going, you're going to feed me first. I don't know if I am pretty boy. Ginger's been with me a long time. But uh, anyway, um, look at this. Look at this little guy. You see that, Wilson? Twelve and a half pounds. Pretty boy Floyd. Okay, I'm going to move on. Ashley, I'm going to put the Peter Max up real fast. Ugh. Do you have a price for both of them? Well, I, I, I lowered it all the way down to 1250 bucks on the blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very unique Peter Max. This is Statue of Liberty on canvas. And it was, it appeared on the, uh, let's see, what's the name of the ship? Norwegian Jewel in March 5th, 2011. This is unique in the sense that most Statues of Liberty are on paper. This is uh, on canvas. Um, I think it's a silk screen on canvas that he highlights. And here is all of the Park West. Peter Max did this in 2008. And boy, it's got a look at that number 242247. Not our number, just the uh, Park West number. And folks, I want to be fair. This is kind of rare because there aren't that many canvas statues of liberty that have been hand embellished by Peter Max. Did this in 2008. And, uh, 
Pretty cool piece. Talk to Ashley. I'd love to work a deal. This is very unique because we were trying to find other canvas and acrylic Statue of Liberty. We found one for 8500 on first dibs. Come on. You found the signature? On the nose. Both 2007. They're kissing blowfish. Now, Wilson, let's just say you're at a pond and you t see two kissing blowfish. Aww. You know what you don't do, Wilson? You don't interrupt them. They can be very mean. Most goldfish are nice, but kissing blowfish. Oh, I don't ever want to see that sight again. It's probably like Romeo and Juliana. Yeah. Did you sell these two? Okay. I have not had a Navarro fish in a long time. I believe the Navarro market because of his contributions to glow in the dark glass. He'll be famous a thousand years from now. First glass maker in the history of time to make glass glow. They've been making glass for 4,000 years, 3,000, 2,500, probably 3,000 years. He made it glow. Call, this is, all right, what is the item number on the Peter Max? Peter Max is 2885. 2885. Now, tell you what I can do. I mean, I found comps, 18.5, one for 20. Tell you what I can do. Uh, Eight thousand two hundred dollars. Mr. Ashley, you're gonna have to rate your show X rated for those two fish. <laughs> I gotta rate my show X rated because I got two kissing blowfish. <laughs> you should have seen what we saw before no, I'm joking. That's the most we ever saw two blowfish do. I don't know about you, Giuliani. Have you done it? What? What does she watch at home? What did you see two blowfish do? In that position, that's impossible. Oh my goodness. All right, well, if you're interested in this, give Ashley a call because I wanna show you an artist that I am truly amazed by and I want to offer some very special deals on my artist, Sasha Basari. They're right behind. Now, folks, Matthew Jackals, Matthew Jackals. Matt, uh, can, can he put up the, pull up the Basari tape? I think it's only like 10 minutes. You're so right. Folks, I'm going to make you, this is one of the most talented artists I ever met in Russia. He lives in St. Petersburg. He is be, beyond a doubt one of the top Russian artists I ever met in my life. Sasha Basari is a graduate of the Pushkin um, School. Then he got a master's degree from the St. Petersburg Academy of Art. He is, he is the king of what is known as gentle surrealism. 
I want to show something that is literally 10, 12 minutes. Is that right? Take a look at this. I'm going to sell some Basari on the other side. I would describe my work and myself as a catcher of the silence, because the main thing that I want to express is that stillness and different gradations of it, festive stillness, twilight stillness and lyrical stillness. Art is a thing I cannot live without. In my mind, I have this need to paint, and that's what I do. If I'm not painting for a week, I feel like I'm not alive. I need something to do. I even paint on vacations, because I just cannot live any other way. I started to draw when I was a kid. First, it was in the kindergarten, then in school, then at the studio, and I never doubted it. It was always a sure thing. So, at the age of 15, I attended art school. I always knew that I would become an artist. It was in my subconscious. Then I attended the College of Art at Nizhny Novgorod. That was a very fun period of my life, because we were getting a lot of new experiences in art. We were learning from each other and competing at the same time. In college, I was the only one who was painting something outside of the course. I would stay up late at the studio and paint and paint. One day, we did an outdoor painting of a still life setup. Everybody drew it the way it's supposed to be drawn, but I did it my way. I drew it from the perspective of the crest, so the subject was far away on the canvas. I was ridiculed by my teacher for that, but I was doing what I really wanted. I wanted to observe the magical world of plants, the world of beauty that is created from almost nothing. I wasn't fighting against the Soviet system. I was fighting against my teachers at the art school. They wanted me to draw like they were doing it, but I wanted to do it my way. They reprimanded me, but they had to deal with it. In my last grade, they almost kicked me out of the school, but then they finally decided to leave me alone. After that, I went to study at the Academy of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg. I studied monumental painting. We studied mosaic, murals, stained glass, and other courses. When I was young, I got interested in Buddhism. I read lots of books about Chan Buddhism and Zen Buddhism. Then I forgot it completely but there was something that was left inside of me. 
That sense of silence and pause stayed in my inner condition. It's so strange that some people see it in my work, because I'm not instilling that into my paintings intentionally. There are a lot of places in St. Petersburg that I love, the whole downtown area. When I was studying in the Academy of Fine Arts, I liked to go to Tavrichesky Garden, Summer Garden, and the Fontanka River embankment, with all those beautiful houses there. Ever since I started working in the studio, I go on a walk every day to the Pier and Paul Fortress. This is my favorite place in the city, because here you can see and smell the Neva River. And there is a great view on the All St. Petersburg, the Hermitage Museum and places like that. I love this place the most right now. I also like the Nikolsky Cathedral area, it's very beautiful over there. The characters I use for my works are existing among us. They're just normal people, but I see something in them, something that catches my eye when I walk past them. Something clicks in my head when I see somebody's look or spirituality or aura. It catches my mind right away. It can be a character from this world, but he brings something from that other world. There is something unique in the person or character. I'm like an antenna, like any other artist. I'm just receiving signals. Before I'm going to start to work on a piece, I must feel the passion to paint. That's why I need something to push me to do it. Usually I just sit on the couch and stare at the canvas in front of me. It can go like that for days until something will inspire me. Because I can't paint without it. That's why my mind is always tuned to receive that impulse. It may come from anywhere, and when it comes, I start to paint. The process is on, the small details inside of my head are coming together to form one picture. I never use a pencil on the canvas. First I paint it over, and then I start to dig things out from the chaos. Like a sculpture starts to shape a stone, I do the same with the brush. Sometimes that stone cracks, so I have to paint it over again. 
and then something starts to come out from that other world. It's like magic. I'm trying to reflect the sense of stillness and calm in all of my work. I'm trying to pause the world. It's a view from the inside or from the outside. It's hard to explain. It's like an entrance to something transcendental. Well, there is this condition in my soul, and no matter what I'm painting, my characters need to reflect that inner condition, that sense I have. Until I feel that the painting is not finished. For example, when I'm finishing my painting, right when I see that it's turning out, I get the sense of eternity and a pure happiness. At that time, nothing exists for me anymore, nothing at all. But, of course, it's an illusion. It's an instant moment, but a very happy one. I like the fact that people see that uncatchable light in my work, because this is what I see too. I spend a lot of time on every painting to instill that sense of light and softness, until I get that gentle softness I'm not going to calm down. I've been developing this style for 15 years now. Before, there were no acrylic paints, only oil. Now we have all kinds of tools and paints. The range is wider now. Everything becomes easier and harder at the same time, because every level you step up to requires something new from you. You have just achieved something and now you need to keep going. When I look at my work that is finished, I feel calmness and peace inside. It's a triumph of stillness. Well, if my paintings make someone happy and they see that simplicity, peace and calmness inside, that makes me happy too. Because this is what I want to reflect in my works, in particular the simplicity, peace and calmness. Those things describe the condition I want my paintings to stay in all the time, but it doesn't always work out that way. But everyone needs to have some place for the soul. There have been times when people who have seen my works have found something in them that I haven't put into them. I always try to abstract away from that. Because if I start to think by somebody else's thoughts, I will forget my own thoughts. And that will confuse me. That's why I'm trying to put in there what I feel, not what other people will discover. Ну 
obviously well, Sasha Bazar if Sasha Basari will still exist in five years, I don't know who he'll be. He might stay the same, maybe he'll change. Change is the permanent process. It's impossible to always stay the same. If you stay at the same level for a long time, you're sinking, because time goes by and it leaves you behind. That's why you always need to discover something new in your life, new techniques, new impressions. It might be invisible for the viewers, but the artists always feel those changes inside of them. It's hard to explain why I love what I do. I just love it, and that's it. Probably because I've done it for all of my life, and it's what I was meant to do. Hi folks, Barry Chapel back with you. I was there to film that with Sasha Basari in 2011. Um, he is uh, the father of what is now known as gentle surrealism, graduate of the Muskin Academy, then master's degree from the St. Petersburg Academy of Art. I'm going to get up, I want to show you something. What Sasha Basari can do better than any artist I have seen in 33 years of being on TV. Look into the eyes of that cat. It's uncanny. You know that cat and that cat knows you. Never seen an artist. And I've seen some great works. When I was at the Hermitage in Russia, I tan touched the dance by Matisse four or five times. I touched three different Vincent Van Goghs. I made sure the guards were looking away. And once again, this was 2011. Nobody can make that kind of recognition. Here is Sasha Basari. That's Barry in 2011. He, I'd, ha I'd have him on the show, Wilson, but he loves trains and cars, but he, he won't get in a plane. Uh, he loves boats, ferry boats, stuff like that. He is one of the most talented artists. This is his late cat. This cat died. Do you have anything to do with that, Giuliani? You didn't go to Russia to hurt this little cat? Okay, just checking. Now, a lot of Sasha Basari's work sells on, or used to, at Satoshi Online. Here, 15,000. Once again, I printed this 14, uh, 13 years ago. And that piece sold so quick it would scare you. U.S. galleries, 15 years, 17 years ago, had some Sasha Basari's. Once again, I'm talking 17 years ago, 5,500 framed. That was a Florida gallery. I only have five Sasha Basari left. Here's one on Satachi, 9,800, 13 years ago. This is Sasha Basari in his studio. He tries to make his animals and, and his, his people historic putting on hats that a person might have worn in St. Petersburg 300 years ago. What I also think is amazing about Sasha Basari is he gives back. He created and his friends sell on the roof of the Hermitage, one of the greatest museums in the world, 
all the proceeds go to help the stray cats and dogs of the Hermitage. And he does it year in and year after. And some of the paintings, you know, are thirty and forty thousand dollar works of art. He has sold out on Satachi. I mean, he is an artist artist and it's gentle surrealism. It's where you just notice tiny, tiny irregularities that you go, wow, that's cool. That's how hard it is to get to the roof of the Hermitage. But this right here is one of the best examples. Look into that boy's eyes. Who is that boy? One brown eye, one green eye. What is he saying to you? He is talking. That is the gift of Sasha Basari. Strangest gift I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of art in 33 years. And what he can do is absolutely amazing. This is the, you know, the picture I tell everybody. I think he looked like Bat, Brad Pitt in this one picture. Now, I grew up a lot of my time in the 80s, and I remember it being the evil empire. According to Ronald Reagan, I never saw so much capitalism in my life in 2014, 2011, my bad. They were zooming around. They were, it was just amazing. And they hustled. And last picture, last two. We ate every single meal at this pizza place. It's literally six blocks from his apartment. And this was our cameraman, Victor. The reason I mentioned, he's the only guy I could translate. I don't know any Russian. I know, Niet, nine, no, that's German, Niet. Now, I only have five. I'm going to offer you guys deals, but let me just tell you this, Wilson, before I sell these, I really believe Sasha Basari is a great artist. I think anybody gets one, you're going to fall in love with the painting, you're going to stare at it, you're going to stare into the eyes of the animal or the people, and you go, wow, this guy's got a lot to say. This was Matt Jackal's favorite Basari. You have this girl, look into her eyes. This dog, they're talking a mile a minute. This right here is BC, if I'm not mistaken, 2811. Is that the right one, Ashley? I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at these orchids. Now, the way he blends colors, and that dog is looking at you, that girl is looking at you, they're talking to you. This is 35,000, 25, 30, this is 35,000 on Satachi Online. I'm gonna work you guys deals that nobody could ever work for you. Before I give a price, I wanna show, I only have five. And then I am out, this is BC 2807. Right here. Now, this one, I thought, and I was, Wilson, I truly thought that I would show this piece with this cute little dog, this dog's eyes and this kid's eyes looking at you, and this would have been sold within a minute. I thought of all of the stories, this was done in 2023. This is called Tricorn Hat, if I'm not mistaken. BC 2807. I thought that would have sold so fast. Of all the Basaris I have seen, and I've seen quite a few, and they have sold, they are in museums. I mean, this guy sells to Russian billionaires. I mean, he sells to everybody, and this, I thought, was one of the coolest pieces. With Napoleon the movie coming out and already been shown and gone, BC 2813, 
I thought, look at that. That's like little Napoleon. Or a Napoleon hat. What do you call a Napoleon hat? That's a tricorn too, but have you ever seen Napoleon holding a bird? No, I haven't either. But if you look at the sky and the color and the different, there's probably 20 shades of green or more. And the shadows, this is what a great artist can do. Only have two more to show you. This one I thought was very interesting. Now I got to get the number on it. Ashley, what is the number on this one? What is it? Night. I think this is night right here. Oh, that's so. This is night. There's a bird on the table. Two eight one two. Is the next one. And the last one I'm just going to put right here. And I got to tell it to stay. Stay. This is 09. Now, folks, I always give the best possible deal for an artist or it doesn't get on my show. And I got to tell you, this is one of the greatest artists I've ever met. Uh, his paintings change people in a good way. That little redheaded stepchild, if he is, redheaded kid, I don't think he's a stepchild, Wilson, is talking up a storm, and so is that little plump bird on the table. That is a gift that only Sasha Basari, I, I, there's other artists who can do it, but I've never met him. So I want to talk to you folks, because I've had different prices. I was selling these, I think, $2,495. Then, in a moment of insanity, I lowered it down and I lowered it down. But I want to make them all go bye-bye, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, anybody that buys one tonight, I am going to frame it for free. Now you stay. Okay, this is going to work. No, it won't, chap. But yes, it will. Don't doubt yourself, Barry. Well, chap, well, somebody's got to doubt you because this is going to fall right down. There's no way this is going to stay up. And there's one behind it, but I'll leave that one behind it because that one behind it is Matt's favorite. Okay. Scooch this over. Yeah, scooch it over. Scooch it over. How do we get this last one? Matt's favorite. Oh, like this. All right. Now, folks, if you're watching right now, I had a 24.95, then I lowered it, and I lowered it, and I lowered it. Uh, 18.95, I lowered it some more. I lowered it to 15.95. Folks, $1,495, I'm gonna frame it. Call me, call Ashley. If you wanna buy two or three, I'll give you even more of a discount. Don't miss out on Sasha Basari. This is one of the greatest gentle surrealist artists you're ever going to find in Russia. His work sells out instantaneously. And I just, I've, I've been off on my presentation for Sasha, but like this tricorn hat right next to me, or Napoleon with a bird in his hand, I mean, these are amazing. 
So what I'm going to do, Ashley, is I'm going to let you get back to the phones. If you, yeah, I'm just going to leave this set up like that. Call. I'll work you a deal. Just call me. I want all of them to find good homes right now. And hi, Dish, Barry Chapel, coming to you live. In about five minutes, I'm going to show you the amazing work of Gregory Wilhelmy uh, from Montana, great artist. But call me, call me. I'm going to work deals. Big Sky Montana. Big Sky Country, yes. <laughs> and folks, actually, I'm even going to go lower on the price. You just call, call. I'm going to sit down right here and... Giuliani, can you sell one? Yeah, because someone's going to call you any second. Uh, just tell me. Tell me what you want to pay. Folks, call me up. If you don't own a Sasha Basari, I think you're making a big mistake. I am so easy tonight. Put me in high heel shoes like Wilson under a street light. How's that business working for you, Wilson? Thumbs up? I think I hear the phone ringing, or is that just my ears? Like what? You heard a train? But I do have a train in my backyard. So. You have a train in your backyard? Yeah. Is it like a toy train or a real train? It's like a real train named Barry. A real train? Yeah. Do you like wave at the conductor and stuff? Mm, I'm not that close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I probably would. Folks, I'm talking a real special <laughs> deal. Call me up. If you own one, I'll see you in a second. I'm going to go low on the price, but you got to call. Make me some offers, and I'll tell you, I would be all over Matt's favorite. I'd be all over the tricorn hat, and I would certainly be on the one on the bottom, the one that looks like Napoleon. That is second to none. Please give me a call on that because uh, it is unbelievable. That one. Right there. That's priceless. Uh, a 2023 Sasha Basari. Look at that. He is showing you tricks in the art business that most people can't grasp, but he has made a perfect painting there. So please give us a call. What I am going to do is move this stuff over. But if you ever wanted a Sasha Basari, tonight is your night. I'm safely going to say I will make your day if you call. Uh, all right, yes. Okay. Yes, we will make your day today. Your night, your week, your month, your quarter, your year. Your year, yeah. But you got to call. And as my late father used to tell me all the time, Barry, to date, no one's ever been shot over the telephone. Hadn't happened yet. Uh, I would put up that one right there. Now, folks, I want to introduce you to an artist I used to work with a while ago. He's a great artist. He is from Roundup, Montana. Painted a lot of work in Butte, Montana. Same place that Evil Knievel came from. Uh, here's a picture of Gregory Helmy. He was commissioned to do a painting for Billings, Montana in the summer of 2002. Look how large of a painting that is. He's got a list of corporate collectors that is who's who. I mean, it is amazing. And... Here is Gregory 
at the museum. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know if that's the Butte, Montana Museum. Talking about one of his shows. He's a guy in the very back. Here is a picture of Gregory. What? Oh, the long road. Uh, that I think is Billings, Montana, at a museum. He gives museum talks, sells out. Look at this list of corporate collectors, AT&T, banks, all of this own Gregory Wilhelmy's originals. Now, this right here is one of one. Hand embellished to clay, uh, to clay, Main Street Memories, Gregory Wilhelmy. Look at that. Yeah, I think he's the second most famous person from Butte, Montana. You know who the first one is, Wilson? Evil Knievel, Robert Crane Knievel. But I want to show you one that I think is so telling of Gregory Wilhelmy's talents. And then I'm going to show you who Gregory Wilhelmy is. All right, this right here, where evil dwells, right here. The spirits of the native son, Evil Knievel, still dwell and, uh, and define the tough and rugged mining town of Butte, Montana. Name of this painting is Where Evil Dwells. And the item number on where evil dwells. He painted this on panel. And he painted this. It will be on the painting. 2895. 2895. Look at that. Some of his earliest works are here. 20... I don't even know, 2010, I believe, or maybe. I want to show you something. We actually have the first acrylic painting he ever painted in the 1950s, but he put it on painting in the 1960s. But that's Gregory Wilhelmy. Now, folks, Matt... I haven't seen this in a long time, but ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see, in his own words, Gregory Wilhelmy. He's one of the most valuable artists I've ever had a chance to get to know. My mom always said he looks just like Gary Cooper. But uh, he's, and I talked to him before the show. You know, he's 80, but I told him, hey, Gregory, you got good news. Because 80 today is really the new 79. He goes, thank you, Barry. So I want to show you Gregory Wilhelmy, the first stock I made on him. I spent a lot of my life uh, judging my uh, success or failure by how impressed other people were with my work. And uh, I know that in the latter part of my life now, I just, I'm trying to impress myself. And uh, I get there every once in a while. Uh, I'll get something that I think is special. And uh, you realize that uh, it's not so, what, so important what other people think. The saying says you spent the first 20 years of your life worrying about what other people think of you. And you spend the next uh, 20 years of your life not worrying about what other people think about you. And then the next 20 years of your life, you realize that nobody was thinking of you anyway. <laughs> so. Look at that beautiful.
beautiful knot that I have there. I think my heart basically is still in the West and with that, uh, the, uh, the, the growth of the West, the death of the West, the scenery of the West. But um, in general, just uh, I find things of visual interest in uh, a lot of different places. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to make a living at this way of life uh, for many years in spite of what my parents told me. They were only half true. <laughs> they were only half right. So, so that's, that's what I do. I'm an artist, a painter. That's all I can remember that I ever wanted to, to do or to be or seriously considered. I started drawing early on. I drew on everything I could. And, uh, we, had, uh, we didn't have any art classes or art lessons or anything. It's just something that I thought I was supposed to be and do. And I tell the story of my folks owned a dance hall in a bar in a, in a little town around up. And I tell the story about my father hiring this itinerant artist to, that came through. He hired him to paint some murals. And I was about six or seven years old. And um, I remember sitting in that dance hall and watching him paint these murals of the mountains and the streams and the deer and the elk and the cabins. And, uh, and they were, you know, I don't know how hokey they really were. But uh, I was just fascinated by, by this man and what he could do. And uh, uh, my father worked in construction, and, uh, my, and, and they wanted to be supportive of what I was going to be, but it just wasn't in their vocabulary. They just didn't quite understand. And when I look back on it, I, you know, I, I understand now why they, you know, they tried to <laughs> steer me in a different direction, but it didn't work. You know, so when I got out of high school, I, started studying art in whatever colleges I went to. I finally graduated from the University of Denver. When I went to college, the art movement in the 60s in the university system was almost 100% devoted to uh, the abstract movements in contemporary art. And for a person who just wanted to go out and learn how to paint or draw something, it was, it was fairly limited. And uh, I took as much life drawing and drawing classes, or as many drawing classes as I could, and, uh, the, um, and I got a degree in fine arts, but I felt woefully uneducated as far as like knowing how to paint and do the things that I, that I wanted to do, and, uh, which is some form of representational art. Where I really learned was at the expense of my students at the uh, Colorado Art Institute. I taught life drawing and design and color theory and I found that I really had to delve into the subject myself and to learn it because these were sharp students and they wanted to know. And so it's been a process. And I tried the commercial art field for a while and uh, that just didn't do it. I've been fortunate enough that I do paintings that I want to do. I very seldom take on any commission work anymore. Most of my sales come from work that I've done that, uh, that uh, somebody sees and wants. And that's where I've been fortunate. It's more, I basically paint the things that I want to paint. Whenever I'm asked from other artists or younger people who are trying to make a living at this, and they say, what's the, uh, you know, what do you do to make this happen? And I, my answer is just be persistent, you know, never give up. Just do what you love and uh, keep doing it. And you'll either make a living at it or you'll starve with it or you might do both of it, but it's what, you're, it's what you're supposed to do. And I think that has to be true with when, any art form you're going into. If you're an actor, a dancer, singer, writer, whatever, you know, that uh, rejection is just a big, heavy word. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's so, so it's rejection, so, but, uh, I think learning that failure isn't, there's no such thing as failure, you know, it's just a, it's a starting point. It's always a starting point. I liked this uh, contemporary realism as a theme, but then uh, it has a, a more of an impressionistic bent to it as far as the way it's portrayed. So my, my themes are contemporary, my, uh, my approach is uh, more impressionistic. And some paintings are very hard for me to part with, that, uh, you know, to put them on the market and sell them. So I'd like to keep some of them. And I, 
every once in a while I find one, I, I squirrel it away and keep it. Uh, it'll be reminiscent of something that was near and dear to me, that I had some deep feelings for. And I have the, you know, the next 40 or 50 paintings I'm going to do, I already know what they are. And I'll never get to them. For if I get to them, there's going to, I hope there's another 40 or 50 out there. So, uh, and that gets easier as I get older. I think for some, you know, that creativity and youth are, are kind of tied together, and I think that's true, but there's a kind of creativity as you get older that's uh, easier. It's not as desperate. You've failed at so many th things already that uh, you can kind of just enjoy the pace that you're at, you know, that there's a peacefulness that comes with it, and, a sh you know, that uh, the fear passes to some degree, and. Uh, you can see things, or at least for me, and see things a little more clearly. Than... I've been fortunate enough that I do paintings that I want to do, and uh, sometimes that leaves off part of the commercial market. Um, things that are, are, are obviously have beauty to them or sentimentality are unfortunately easier to, to sell at times, and, uh, but not, not always. Uh, so. I think that one of the great part about being an artist is that uh, you're try it, it gives you a chance to continue to grow the rest of your life until Alzheimer's sets in or the, you get blind like the old dog. Uh, but you, you know, there's that, that's, that's the real beauty of this kind of life is that there's a growth potential there that you may, you probably will never get there, but the dream is always out in front of you. Folks, that was Gregory Wilhelmi in Montana painting. He is a museum painter. He's invited all over the world to speak. A lot Montana and the Northwest. They love him. I love his artwork. He brings a subtle nuance that is amazing. So I showed you this first piece where evil dwells and showing the rugged spirits of Butte, Montana. 2895. Retail on something like this, an early original, probably 28 to 32,000. I'm not gonna charge anywhere near that. But you were talking about an earlier Wilhelmi, one that uh, put this whole area on the map. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me show you the 10 I have, and I'm gonna start selling them. I'm gonna work you deals you cannot believe. I'll tell you what, this seems like a simple little painting. Ashley, if you could Put where evil dwells. Back, hand it to Wilson. <laughs> no, I'm joking, Wilson. This right here is called wash, wash Day. Now, east side of Roundup, Montana, my hometown, everything is falling down and in a state of decay, but at least the sheets will be clean. Now that's the type of painting you want to see. Where everybody's going to paint the coolest mountain, the coolest sunset. He's saying, hey, no one's going to paint washing the sheets in Roundup, Montana. And from the truck to everything. Retail 17000 but I'm not going to charge you anywhere near 17,000 on this one. I just want to get a Gregory Wilhelmi. Two eight nine zero wash day and round up. Ashley, I think you have it down there. Cadillac problems. 
This is pure Gregory Wilhelmy. This one right here, 2000 Cadillac Problems 2021. Original oil on canvas, Gregory Wilhelmy. Their, their Cadillac broke down on the road to the family ranch. The place went bust in the mid 50s and now and it's own uh, it's now owned by a tech billionaire i guess he owns the cadillac too people just lee and and gregory said this is something i got to paint you got this car that a long time ago is worth a fortune and it breaks and they just do what most people would do leave it there if they own the land stunning Retail twenty six thousand. I'm not going to charge you anywhere near that. I just want to give you an idea. This 1949 Cadillac. Now, Ashley, let's let's show them the diptych here. This is what Gregory specializes in. This is two pieces that go together as one. The last payphone. Today everybody's got cell phones. But 20, 15, even 10 years ago, people used payphones. And you got this cowgirl on the phone probably the first phone call on that phone in a while you like pay phones yeah. you like pay phones I used to have to call my mom on a pay phone every, every day after school and I, we would talk so long that I always have to have change to add more money uh oh <laughs> uh, the pair is retails for 17500 I'm not going to sell them individually I'm going to sell them both yeah, and that is a tribute to what Gregory Wilhelmy does. All right. Now, where is the oldest tree on the on the? Yeah. Yes, I see it. Yeah. Here is the oldest tree on earth. He painted this in 2002. Yeah. Oil on panel. Great. Basin National Park, Nevada. The struggles to survive for 5,000 years has created this dramatic, twisted, and tortured beauty, beauty of the Bristol Cone Pine. That is, so pretty. that is amazing. Corporate collectors would give, you know, Gregory would sell this if. If a corporate collector had wanted it, it'd be 35000 I mean, this is one of his earliest paintings. Well, well, I got one two decades earlier, but this was painted in 2002, 22 years ago. I'm not going to charge anywhere near that. I just want to give you a sense of the value of Gregory Wilhelmy. Now... What other paintings do you have over there? Yeah, put the fire. I said fire and you go fire. fire. <laughs> Matt, you need to call 911. There's a fire in here. Have you ever heard that term, fire? fire? 
I don't use that term. Willis and I go, fire in a crowded movie theater. Now, this is supposed to be like this. I talked to Gregory on the phone an hour and a half before I started. He was telling me about how he textured this painting to bring out this fire. It's called Fire on St. Gregory's Pond 2012, original oil on canvas. Fire on St. Gregory's Pond. The forest fires burned for five days. On this morning, the flames slowly danced in front of the rising sun. That is a masterpiece, folks. That's what a $35,000 Gregory Wilhelmy looks like. And he painted this 2012, 12 years ago. That is a masterpiece. Retail 35,000. Look at that. Now I'm not going to charge you 35,000. I just want you to see. Yeah, we got two more to show you, and that's it, right? Oh, yeah, here, let me show Shooting Star first. This is what Gregory Wilhelmy does. Shooting Star. He painted this uh, original on linen, blue-purple shadows cast on a concrete court creates a dramatic setting. The clock is counting down and the game is on the line. Look at this little kid. Did he date this one? Yeah. Is that 18 or 2018? 12,000 is the retail on that. I'm not going to charge anywhere near 12000 All right. This, I'll go ahead and show yours there. Lillian's Lily. Lillian's Lily. Lily's 2021 original on canvas, acrylic on canvas. Gregory Wilhelmy. Now... Somewhere, look at the heavy use of acrylic. I mean, these come way off the painting. Wilson, can you capture that? Like the fine cameraman you are. I hear they're going to hire you for Mission Impossible, right? <laughs> Mission in Impossible, yeah. No. This is just a fun painting. The Gregory painted of one of his neighbors had all these lilies. Original uh, acrylic on canvas. And then I'm going to do the last painting, which is the earliest Gregory Wilhelmy he's ever allowed me to offer. This is called Spring Runoff. Cherry Creek, Denver, Colorado, 1968. Fast, uh, first acrylic painting. Gregory Wilhelmy. Cherry Creek, 1968, Denver, Colorado. This is my very first acrylic painting. I created it in 1968 and gave it to my father who hung it in his bar dance hall. So that is the very first acrylic that a legendary artist ever painted. Let's see, 68, 78, 88, 98, 08, 18. That's 50. 50, five years ago, 56 years ago? 56 years ago. 
I have no idea to put the value on the first acrylic that Gregory Wilhelmy ever painted. I mean, I don't know. Now, folks, here's what I want to do. What I would like to do, call me up. I think they're all amazing, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with any of your requests, but this one right here. Where evil dwells in Butte, Montana. And he mentioned the home of Evil Knievel. Tell you what. We're going to put the graphics up. I'm going to show you how cheap I'm going to open. Where evil dwells. The spirits of the native son, Evil Knievel, still dwells in and defines the tough and rugged mine, mining town of Butte, Montana. Now here's what I can do, folks. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh. This is a $30,000 painting. The spring runoff, the first painting Gregory ever painted? Oh my goodness, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, on spring runoff, 1200 On this, this is like 30000 uh, major bank or something like that. Not here, where evil dwells. I'm going to give somebody one heck of a de deal. Where evil dwells, the place where evil dwells. Oh, this is cheap. This is a pretty famous painting. Um, $2,000 to open, actually. That's cheap. $2,000 to open, $200 increments on where evil dwells. This is the Gregory Wilhelmy. Used to call him my cowboy artist. Oh, like Evel Knievel? Yeah. Yes. This should be where evil dwells. E V E L. Like Evil Knievel. I pay per view to watch him jump the Grand Snake River. I believe him. That parachute just went. All right, folks, that is too cheap. 2000 is. Let me tell you what. I got a. Um. <coughs> I got to get some paintings, Moot. This is a winner of winners. And evil is spelled like evil, can evil, E V E L. All right, now here's what I'm going to do, folks. Right here. This is a story piece of story pieces. Gregory even taped the story on the back about this 1949 Cadillac. Cadillac problems, 30 by 40, oil on canvas. I don't think that's 30 by 40, though. What? Well, he put on the measurements of 30 by 40, but... Oh, okay. So this is Cadillac Problems. I'm going to make somebody so happy. Folks, you want a, an amazing Wilhelmy? Trust me on this. This is a winner of winners. 
$1,000 to open. I'm going to get in trouble with Gregory. I'm getting in trouble with everybody. But $1,000 to open on Cadillac Problems as you look at this 1949 Cadillac that just finally broke. That's a cool painting. And Ashley, whoever buys the first will help me. I'm going to frame it and ship it for free. Yeah. Just to give you, because I don't want to run out of time. Camera two. While you're thinking about these 10 Wilhelmies. Matt, I might want to run the second part of that docudrama because I want you to get the flavor of who Gregory Wilhelmy is. He's a museum artist. He, he, he does shows at museums throughout the Northwest. Whether you're talking North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, they call on Gregory Wilhelmy. And tell me when you're ready. I think we're ready. Yep. Take a look at this. I live in Montana and I'm an artist and I paint pictures, a lot of pictures of a lot of different things in a lot of different places. The hardest part of doing any painting is getting it started and after you get a certain place with it then it kind of starts to fall together on its own and it's easier to deal with but when you're first starting it you have to concentrate more to know for sure in your own mind what it is that you need to do to get a good product, a good picture. One of the problems about working outside is that it takes forever for oil paint to dry. So by adding some dryer into the white paint, that uh, allows me to get a better, faster drying time and to uh, have an easier time of completing my painting. I use a medium that I specially mix up for outdoor use, again with some dryer in it. And I, uh, after I have completed a preliminary, preliminary sketch of what it is that the main things that I want to paint, and I put on a brush light coating of this medium over the entire surface. It helps the uh, oil paint spread more evenly. And I also, um, I prefer a warm sienna tone to put my paint onto it. Uh, just as a personal preference is that, first of all, I hate to work just on a stark white canvas because the oil paint leaves leave holes in your painting that the white will show through. <clears throat> and uh, I always prefer a warm surface to paint on because it warms the other colors that I put over the top of it. Anytime that you're painting outside, you're dealing with uh, weather, sunlight, time. Within 90 minutes, you have basically 90 minutes to get down uh, your study because after that, the light will have changed significantly enough that you have a totally different picture that you're working with. If you're painting in town, there's always the, uh, you try to get out of the way out of, out of the, on a side street where the traffic's not heavy and where you don't have a lot of interruptions. And then there's the elements. Like this morning, it was only about 30 degrees when we first got, came out here. I was pretty sure of that. So there's the cold and some of there's the heat. It's the bugs, the wind, the rain. <laughs> and just the logistics of setting up. 
So one of the more important aspects and the reasons to work outside is that it allows the artist to develop a visual memory for color and value and tone. I paint inside more than what I used to, but you still need to get out in the field and work because the human eye sees so much different than the camera and uh, it's also the immediacy of, the, of seeing the scene and working with it. And nothing is compelling as visually as uh, coming out actually seeing the scene and, uh, and the challenge of being able to paint it. Setting up uh, like this is, gives you the best kind of information to go back to the studio and do a finished painting. So when you're back in your studio and you're working and you're looking at uh, reference material, say it's photographs you've taken or drawings that you've done, and the painting isn't working right, uh, this kind of outdoor experience gives you the kind of knowledge you need to go back and make it right. My favorite place is when I first started painting out, outside location, I had taken a trip to Germany. And uh, anytime that you're painting outside, you attract more of an audience. And uh, to give me courage to get out, because there was always be a crowd watching, is that I, you could buy beer in Germany by the, uh, by the quartz, the, the bottle of beer was the, the kilo thing or whatever. <laughs> so, and, and it was very acceptable to have beer for breakfast in Germany, so I put a couple of those big bottles in my backpack. And I worked in watercolors mostly then. And so I could set down almost any street corner and get out your beer and get out your watercolors and uh, do a painting, have a crowd, have a conversation. Uh, the person's reaction to your work is... Uh, sometimes surprising to me you know, that they'll get things out of something that I, uh, I necessarily wasn't intending or uh, even thinking about. So I think basically I just I do my work and then whatever a viewer drags away from it or how they respond to it. And one thing I've learned over the years is that, uh, that you really can't uh, predict it. <laughs> so, a lot of times paintings that I really like uh, 80% of people will just, uh, and I'll expect people to respond the same way to something that I really like, and it, it seldom ever happens. <laughs> when I came down here, it was a Sunday morning a few days ago, and I was looking for a location to, for us to paint on, and I was, uh, what captured me, my eye, was uh, the light source. It was, we were, I was down here around 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was quiet and uh, there was just nice contrast between the darks and the light area and so the, this focal area in here really stood out, just popped. I liked the way that at that morning where the cerulean blue sky was a nice complement off the oranges and the warm tones in here. It all looks good to me right now. I'll put it in my studio for a few days and look at it and uh, maybe some things will come to me that uh, that I can add or change at the time. But right now it feels good. Being done with something like, and, be, and having the painting being finished, I think are two different things. What I can say for sure right now is I'm about done with this painting. All in all, I think it turned out to be a very nice piece. I think it's kind of captivating. Hi folks, that was the second part of Gregory Wilhelmy. And what I want to show you now, this right here, I'll tell you what, let's auction something off. Which one, Ashley, tell you what, I know that this painting right here means a ton to Gregory 
painted it 22 years ago. Bristol Cone Pines, oldest tree on earth. The struggles to survive for 5,000 years has cre created this dramatic, twisted, and tortured beauty of the Biscone Pine. Now here's what I'm going to do, folks. This is a monster painting. What is, yeah, you got it there. Thank you, Matt. You know, I can't read without my glasses anymore. No. Yeah. I'm going, Wilson, I'm going. I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna get some action going, and this is a painting that, you know, I was on the phone with Gregory. I've known him for 25, 30 years. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we trust each other, and I I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, my gosh. This is one of his most famous paintings when he does museum shows. He wasn't going to tell me on the phone we were talking, Ashley, but I think he turned down 14000 for this painting like 12 years ago, but here's what I'm gonna do. I just wanna see if anybody's watching me right now. This is so cheap, it's scary. If I don't get bids, I don't know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off the 18 inch ledge. Are you ready for this? Matt, this is so cheap, it's embarrassing. Please go for a lot more. $1,000 to open which is crazy. He got offered 14 grand for this 10, 12 years ago, $1,000 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. Now, that comes with a story that Gregory felt compelled to track up this old path to paint this piece. That's too cheap. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. I hope you're out there because at a thousand dollars to open, that's crazy. How could I lose my glasses? There they are. I found them. Oh. Look at that painting, Wilson. Tortured over time, 5,000 years old, this tree. No, I can't believe it. No open. I refuse to believe that. And I'm going to take this down so fast. And uh, move this right over here. Uh oh. I don't want to break that backdrop there, Ashley. No. Hand embellished to clay. Number one of one. This was the first one he did. Gallery retail, $4,500. List price, $4,500. But this is one of one, so this was a Marquette to the edition. But list, $4,500, Matt, and here's what I'm going to do. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Main Street Memories. All right. I'm just curious who's watching me right now. This is the Marquette to an edition he did. Started zero, $200 increments. 
I'm just curious if anybody's watching. That is his memories of Roundup, Montana when he was a lot younger. And that is one of one, virtually an original to the addition of Main Street Memories. Yep, yeah, pretty boy Floyd is going to get a haircut. And I'm a splurge. I want, I want the blow dry treatment, nails clipped. Now that I found out she's a Pomeranian. We have a $400 open. Folks, I thank that open. But this is the one of one. This is the first of the edition. And after he did the edition, legendary artist Gregory Helmy hand embellished it too. This is amazing. Look at his memories of the kids on the one side in the Letterman sweaters in the 1950s and 60s when they lettered in baseball or basketball. This is crazy. 4,500 would have been cheap. Look at that. Roundup Montana when Gregory Wilhelmy was a kid. I mean, this is so cheap. We're at 400, looking for 600. He's got to go up to six because I got, yeah, I did $200 increments. We're at 400 looking for six, and I'm sorry if I'm lollygagging. Who's going to make it six? 400 looking for six. What do they say, Julia? 600 has been bid. Folks, this is 4,500. This is the Marquette. This is the one of one. This was hand embellished by Gregory Wilhelmy. I am at 600, looking for eight. This is, this is an amazing work. We're at six, looking for eight. Oh, look at that, the Letterman sweaters. Did you have a Letterman sweater? No, I didn't either. Well, I did. It said, it started with a K, hyphen, started with an M. Yeah, on the back of my shirt, they wrote, kick me. I right, can they beat? Chopper, are you kidding me? This is exactly what you want. Of all the work since I've met you, Chopper, I'm at 600 on the Marquette, one of one, by an artist that gets... 20 and 30 and 40,000, will he go to eight? We're at six, Chopper. This is so cheap. I wasn't even supposed to put this up less than 2,200. 600, looking for eight. Chopper, trust me on this one, buddy. Look at these cars. The bank of Roundup, Montana. All right, hang on, we're at 600. Oh, this is cheap. Six hundred dollars going once. 
Ugh. Six hundred dollars going twice. Fair and final warning. And who is your new customer? Mr. E Z. E C. From Florida. Congratulations. Florida, thank you, Mr. E Z. I'm right over here, Wilson. Thank you, Mr. E Z. You got a deal of deals there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, tell you what. Hmm. This is a diptych. Whoever gets this, it's beautifully framed. This is panel one of two, the last pay phone. And what year did it say he did that on the on your side? On my side, it says. No, uh, right behind you. What? 2017. 2017. We've got to slide your side over a little bit. That's the bigger one. Well, yeah, I'm going to let you hold okay. them there. See? Folks, this is what Gregory Wilhelmi specializes in. You're talking the last payphone, a diptych. We're talking two pieces here. Now, what Gregory Wilhelmi is captured is the sometimes the fading effects of the north northwest you're talking billings montana butte montana roundup montana where 20 years earlier you know people would be on the phone the pay phone or in their home phone but now everybody's got cell phones nobody ever uses a pay phone Maybe at the airport, but when's the last time you used a payphone, Wilson? Years. Many years. So what Gregory Wilhelmi, museum artist Gregory Wilhelmi, museum, he gives talks at museums, where cities, we're talking cities. This right here is the city of Billings, Montana, commissioned him to paint this and Gregory is not a little guy so the whole city got together they commissioned him to paint this Italian scene in Billings Montana as you drive in or it's inside the Capitol building it is amazing you're talking to probably a forty five thousand fifty thousand dollar commission many years ago so this is a stunning you're getting both pieces and here's what I'm going to do oh. on the last pay phone here's what I can do You're getting two pieces, not one. You get them both. Oh, this is too cheap. Folks. Oh, this is too cheap, Wilson. $1,250 to open. $100 increments after we get the open. This is exactly what museum artist Gregory Wilhelmi, who is 80, paints. These scenes that we don't even notice. And you see the shadows. You see the girl. The, you see people on the phone. And he notices stuff like this. And he calls it the last pay phone. And this is stunning. At $1,250 to open. $100 increments. You're getting two Wilhelmies. This is a diptych. You're getting both pieces. Custom framed. That's crazy money. You know, about 15 years ago, my mom did an edition of Gregory Wilhelmi posters 
Well, we had Gregory Wilhelmy sign 50 of them and write one of 50, two of 50, three of 50. Those sold out at 375. They were just a poster. They sold out at $375 each. Now I'm talking two originals at $1,250. and it can be yours. Oh, that's amazing. This is captivating. This is something you hang in your office and people look at that and they think back to when they used the pay phone, the shadows, Gregory, you know, Plain air painter probably s stood up there and uh, put his easel up. Any interest in this one, Ashley? Hold on. <laughs> uh, they had Woodstock in Roundup, Montana, but but yes, yeah, she could be calling home, Chopper. Well, I'm going to take this down and yeah, thank you. Yes, here's what I am going to do. This is pure yeah Juliana's on the line look at this wash day they want to open on the old other one so we have the open on the last one all right, Ashley, we got to put the last payphone back up. What's that? Register them. We got the open. And I thank all the new regs tonight. Oh, okay, I'll leave that one there. Here we go. The last payphone by museum artist Gregory Wilhelmy. And we have the $1,200 open. Uh, what? $1,250. So we have the $1,250 looking for $1,350. And I want to thank everybody who's watching me tonight. I got a big Peter Max Statue of Liberty. I got a uh, Fazino. I have a Raphael Abacassis. I have the first acrylic painting Gregory Wilhelmy ever painted. Oh man, this is cheap. I know Gregory turned down, I don't know if it was this one or the other one, he turned down 17,000 one time. He did a show at my mom's gallery, it was different works, but someone had seen this and said, hey, we and he, anyway. 1250 this is quite the deal. Going once. Oh, this is too cheap. What is your customer's name? Do TM? Well, TM, uh, camera two, uh, please. Matt, could you dial 911? There's a robbery going on in here right now. I don't mean to get TM in trouble, but there's a robbery going on. 1250 going once to TM. This is too cheap. 1250 they're killing me. Going twice. And TM, I don't want to blame you if I have a heart attack right now. Uh, TM killed me. Uh. All in, all said, sold to TM. Thank you, and you got a deal of a lifetime. That is sold. 
Now, this is exactly what Gregory Wilhelmy paints. Or this is why he is such a museum artist. It's entitled Wash Day. Now, this is what Gregory says. East side of Roundup, Montana, my hometown. Everything is falling down and in a state of decay. But at least the sheets will be clean. And what Gregory Wilhelmy is talking about is how many of the small towns in the northern plains and the northern west are vanishing. They're going away. And he says his, his home city of Roundup is in decay. Nothing works. And at least there'll be clean sheets on wash day. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. On wash day, I'm going to make somebody such a great deal. $600 to open $100 increments. And this painting, wash day, was painted in... Twenty eighteen wash day six hundred open. It retails for eighty nine hundred dollars, and I have it up for six hundred dollars to open on wash day. That is crazy money. List 8,900. That is exactly the plight. If you ever take a trip through the northern, the northwest, uh, I once drove the loneliest road through Nevada, and you see so many towns that 40 years ago were booming, 20 years ago were still around, now they're not much there. And here we got Roundup, Roundup, Montana, looking for a mere 600 to open. We sold one of the Navarro fishes. We have one left. Nobody at $600? Okay. I am going to put that back. I'll tell you what I'm going to put up. And I talked to Gregory about this painting right before the show started. Fire on... St. Gregory's Pond, 2012, 12 years ago, original oil on canvas, fire on St. Gregory's Pond. He was talking about 12 years ago when fires were burning through Montana. And he says, the forest fires burned for five days. On this morning, the flames are slowly dancing in front of the rising sun. Folks, this is a masterpiece. You know, it's funny because Gregory is 80 years old. He's a great artist. He's done very well over the years. Has twin daughters that are all grown up. He's got grandkids. He's got everything. Great wife. I've met his wife on several occasions. He used to fly out from Montana to be on my show live when I owned a company called Art and Coin TV. Here's what I'm going to do. 
And this is one of his favorite paintings. Wilson, you see that pond at the beginning? You see how the, the orange just dances? I mean, this is what Gregory Wilhelmy does better than anybody else. Hold on, I'm going to get myself in so much trouble. Does that retail say 35000 Okay, folks, I need your help on this one. I need your help. All I can do is put up a, a price that's going to get me in so much trouble if it sells for this. Are you ready for this? Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, don't do this, Chapel. I hope there's 10 bidders. $1,000. I couldn't even say it. It's so cheap. $1,000 to open, $200 increments after we get the open. This is one of Gregory's favorite paintings of all time. I was talking to him before the show began. Ashley was listening, and he went into detail about how he made this painting survive. And uh, look at this. This is stunning. Museum artist Gregory Wilhelmy. This is a $35,000 retail. He gives talks at the Butte uh, Art Museum. He gives, he travels all over. He goes to Wyoming, gives talks, gives talks everywhere. He is that famous. That's too cheap. Can I take this down? What, what's fair, Ashley? Because I don't want to get anybody mad at me, but I don't know what fair is, but this is one that Gregory, you heard his voice when I talked about this. And, oh, look at that. And Ashley, whoever wants, whoever gets this painting, I'm going to frame it for him for free. It'll look like a million bucks, which it should be worth already. No, I know. No open once. No open twice. That's crazy. I'm going to take that down. Now you want to see an amazing painting, Ashley. If you can move that one over. This is Lily's Lilies. Apparently, he and his wife Cheryl had a neighbor named Lily, and she loved lilies. Why, why wouldn't a person named Lily like lilies? This is acrylic, uh, original oil and acrylic on canvas, painted three years ago. Lily grew lovely lilies in her flower garden. She added beauty to her neighborhood. I used metallic base acrylic in the paint and to add color and texture. Look at that. Lily's Lily signed by Gregory Wilhelmy. This is museum artist Gregory Wilhelmy's. Oh my goodness. It's a large painting. $1,000 to open, $200 increments once we get it. I'm looking for 1000 to open. I, hope, I thank everybody for watching me. I'm down to three or four Wilhelmies. Hey, Mom. Hang on a second. I got to talk to my mother. 
My mom is calling on the other line. Mom, they're tough tonight. They're beating on me. Yeah, if I go like this, Mom, <laughs> they killed me. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, we'll work a deal, whatever. Yeah, but this is Lily's Lilies by Gregory Wilhelmy. Thousand open. And I promise. All right. So she wants this. Oh, the wash day. The fire. Yeah, I'll bet she does. <laughs> Ah, Mom, you're killing me. Oh, my gosh. Wilson, I love my mom, and so can you for 12. No, stop, Chapel. I love my mom, but in the world of ulcers, she's known as a carrier. She'll give you one. Mom, I'll, I'll talk to Gregory. Okay, no one on this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you. One more will help me. The one that should have sold, oh, two more. First of all, Ashley, you were talking about Gregory Wilhelmy's first ever acrylic painting that he painted in 1968. He actually thought about painting it in the late 50s and then got around to painting it in 1968. The first acrylic painting he ever painted. It's called Cherry Creek, 1968, Denver College. This is my very first acrylic painting. I created it in 1968 and gave it to my father, who hung it in his bar slash dance hall. Now, you talk to somebody about this. I gave them an incredible price. Are they interested in it? No. Oh, that's where they were. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, the, the best I can do, and I hope somebody gets this, this is the very first acrylic painting that Gregory will, will help me ever painted. And spring runoff, right? Yes. Tell you what, lower it down to $900 to open. That's amazing. 68, 78, 88, 98, 08, 18 is 50, 56 years ago he painted this painting. This is a keeper, folks. We have the open. We have the open, thank you. Eight, nine hundred has been bid, looking for a thousand. Look at that. Spring runoff, hung in his dad's bar and dance hall. This is the first acrylic painting Gregory Wilhelmy ever painted. Nine hundred, looking for a thousand. Nine hundred dollars, going once. Nine. Hundred dollars. Look at those reflections. Yes. You ever gone white water rafting? Oh, right. we went canoeing. Yeah, we went canoeing. Yes. We didn't get very far. You did. I went about forty feet and hit a rock. And ended up walking back. I know Jack gave him a great rating. I'm going, you guys got to be kidding me. Why don't they just launch the canoes 40 feet further down? Because the first, they, they launch them on, a, on a, a place like this. And 4 out of 12 flip over and end it. 
where if they had just launched it down here, we all would have been anyway. We have the open 900 going once, 900 going twice. Fair and final warning. All in, all said, sold. And congratulations, that was a deal. Here is the creme de la creme. This is it. This is the beef tartare of the show. Have you ever had beef tartare yet, Wilson? We're all meat. That's what I used to eat all the time. I was lazy. I put a ton of accents, salt on raw hamburger meat, and I'd eat it. And I'd occasionally dip it in Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. This is where evil dwells. Original oil on panel, Gregory Wilhelmy. And he wrote, the spirits of the native sun, evil can evil, still dwells and defines the tough and rugged mining town of Butte, Montana. So, this is amazing. Wilson, you could look right in the windows of that motel above where evil dwells. And he's spelling evil like evil can evil. E V E L. Now I'm going to look, folks. This is an amazing Gregory Wilhelmy. Oh, this is this is one of the greatest Wilhelmys. I know. I'll tell you what, Ashley. I'm gonna lower the price on this. I hope you're out there. This is museum quality. Don't do it, Chapel. Step away from the microphone, Barry. Wilson, don't let me do this. Oh, don't do it, Jebel. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You're going to be sorry. Sorry like evil can evil when his parachute right on launch. I felt sorry for him. I'll tell you what. You know his real name was Robert Crane Knievel? He was born in Butte, Montana. Tell you what I'm going to do. Don't do this, Jebel. If I don't get the open on this, I know I'm, I'm way out of my league because something's wrong. $1,000 to open. This is one of the most famous paintings. And this, you can look in the windows where evil dwells, spelled like evil can evil. This is oil and acrylic on board. This is something. Matt, I don't bet anymore. And I'm glad because I never bet well. Got lucky a couple times and that was it. Matt, put up a 1 minute and 26 second clock. I believe in the next one minute and 26 seconds, someone's going to open. I hope there's many other bill, uh, uh, bidders, but when you talk about a painting where evil dwells, spelled like evil could evil, a $30,000 retail from a museum artist. Here's Gregory giving a talk at a museum, I think, but uh, no, uh, Billings, at the Billings Museum. People travel from everywhere to listen to Gregory talk about his memories of the West. Here is a different show. Wilhelmy. 
Now, folks, I'm down to 37 seconds. I hope somebody gets the open on this because this is the money painting of the show. I literally was under the belief that the painting like this would go for 17 or 1800 to open and go up to four or 5000 I am looking for $1,000 to open. And I am down to seven, six, five, four. No open. Where evil dwells. I might buy this one. I never compete with customers, but when you look at the shadows that he is putting in this painting, Wilson, when you go to that heavy yellow focal point, then the blue windows on each side, unbelievable. Look at that. Blatt's beer. Do you remember that? No open once. Family aged. All right. Well, call me if you saw one. I'll do everything I can. And here's what I am going to put up right now. Folks, here I'll tell you what on this shooting star. I just want everybody to take it. I didn't put this one up for auction. If I did, I forgot about it. Watch this. That's an original Gregory Wilhelmy. He's playing with the shadows. And uh, just this little kid shooting basketball. Here, I'm going to make this so cheap, I'm going to find out if, if, if it's me. Shooting star, 2018, Gregory Wilhelmy. Blue purple shadows cast on a concrete court creates a dramatic setting. The clock is counting down and the game is on the line. $300 to open, $100 increments. Look at that shooting star. I don't have any more Wilhelmies over there, right? Okay. Oh, that's so cheap. His signature's worth more than $300. And, oh, he's a museum artist. He's 80 years old. He has twin daughters. Yeah. Okay. Ashley. Let's get serious with, what type of crystal is in this painting? Swartsky? <laughs> it's not, you sure it's not Swartsky? Um, have you showed the customers where they are? Where the crystals are? Yeah. I gotta be careful. Why don't you show them because, Wilson? You know about this better than I would ever know. Now you see those crystals? Is that crystal meth? No. no. I'm just asking Wilson. They're beautiful crystals. There's some in the, the hot air balloon. Show the beautiful crystals. On top of the mountain See are those Schwartzky crystals, is that how you say it? I'm only testing. What is it? Uh, Wilson, say it. Schwartzky. Schwartzky. <laughs> no, what am I saying wrong? No, you're saying it good. 
Did I say it right? Schwarsky. All right. Say it slowly to me. Swa? No. Skworsky. Swar is the first part, right? Swartsky. I have no idea. Oh, stop. Look at that. As Ashley put out, look at the hot air balloon. I'll tell you what. I have a comp on this particular piece for $19,000. Swartsky rifle scope. All right. Is it accurate? Could I what? I should. <laughs> ah. All right, folks, this is one of the most ex expensive Charles Fazinos I have ever seen. This is ultra deluxe, ultra rare. And I'll tell you what, I wanna I wanna give everybody a chance. I sold some of his work in the late 90s, early 2000. And then about 2004, his work become, became unattainable. It was like uh, Thomas Kincaid for a while. You couldn't get it. And this is one of the most expensive Charles Fazino's ever made. And it is, well, now that they spelled it, I can pronounce it. Swarski. Is that right? Look at that. That is three dimensional art. Some of those pieces you're looking at are three quarters of an inch, half inch, some places maybe even an inch off the paper. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tell you what I'm even going to. I'm going to lower this down. Oh, this is too cheap. Folks, if you know about Charles Fazino, when they say 19,000 or 29,000 galleries, get it. I'm not a gallery. 2400 to open $100 increments. And that is an amazing piece. Look at that. Look at that, folks. So, Wilson, you're a good cameraman. You've turned your life around. How long ago did you give up crystal meth? I'm not at you. You're still on it, Juliana? Don't look at me like that. I'm just asking Wilson. He did LSD. He took a lot of LSD trips, right? Three. Three LSD trips. Now, Wilson, did you like LSD better than crystal meth? I did, yes. I didn't like either one. You didn't like either one. But you did three LSD trips. I bungee jumped twice because the first time it scared the piss out of me, and I was already there, and I figured, all right, I'll go back up and do it one more time. It scared me more. The second I never went bungee jumping again. But on three separate occasions, you got stoned on LSD. The first two were cool. The first two were what? Cool. Were cool. So the third one was a bad trip. And that's what turned you to crystal meth. Do you still have your meth pipe? Okay. I'm just asking. I mean, he works camera.
Oh, I'm going to show the depth. Here, we got to go like this. Are you ready? Can you get the depth? Look at the depth of this painting. <laughs> Look at the depth from our angle. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. The Great Basin. The Great Basin, yes. What's it say? Does it say Hollywood? No, it says Buda, uh Newport Beach. Oh, you see Newport Beach? Newport Beach. Yeah, hang on. Mojave Desert. Yeah, Mount Whitney, Grand Canyon. A horse and a donkey mating. Napa what? Valley. Napa Valley. Fresno, San Jose. San Francisco. Come on. Well, if Hollywood was going to be in it, my goodness, they only did 200 of these. This is 97 of 200. Deluxe Edition Hollywood. DX. Hollywood. There we are in Hollywood. You found it. Okay, we'll pull, pull the graphics up. We're going to make this bad boy go bye-bye right now. Or this bad girl. So, Wilson, who was asking about that? Cause Mr. M. Mr. M, is this, let me work you a deal, Mr. M. I got to ask Wilson a few more questions, though. So. When you finally said, I have had enough of heroin, was it hard to quit heroin? Which was harder, the crystal meth or the heroin? Never did heroin. What? Never did heroin. You never did heroin. You were offered some heroin. What about blow? You did cocaine? What the hell's wrong with you, Wilson? Once when I was 15, I took three puffs of, uh, of, of, of marijuana and I get scared the hell out of me. Made me nuts. And you're sitting here shooting up, junkie. What the? Never mind. You're a fine cameraman, Wilson. Oh, we're talking about Wilson. He uh, is our cameraman. He has two gigs, he works a camera, then some nights he lives here in his high heel shoes and uh, he is a, what, 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 you're a man of the evening? I'm trying to help him, I'm shaming him straight. I'm gonna work him a deal. I'm walking over here. stuff away now Wilson I don't drink and I have not smoked any marijuana since I was 17 and a half because somebody apparently told me afterwards somebody had laced it with PCP so I don't drink I don't do drugs the only drug I loved was um, strawberry flavored opium, but they gave that to me in the hospital in 1979 because I had a bad pain. I was in Miami and they were evacuating before a hurricane and I was only 17 or 16 years old. That was a good bottle. But yes. What? Sold? No. This is Wilson Wilson Jackson's drug troning show. How much?
talking about here? Mr. W. Mr. W. This is the most expensive I've had of Charles Fazzino. Deluxe edition. You're so close. You're in the ballpark. You're at the plate. I mean, I'll tell you what. Where was he, Ashley? Because I think I can work a deal with him. This is a showstopper. Ashley, if he can come up $150 from where he offered. And he's getting something that I have done an awful job explaining why when Charles Fazzino signed this, see how he put 200DX. The deluxe editions are usually three to four times the price of the regular editions. So you got only 200 deluxe edition. Then he hand paints the title. Then he signs his name over here. And I'm looking at places where the 3D comes at least an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. This is probably his most expensive Charles Fazzino. What does he say? I'm willing to work him a deal. Can he come up just a little bit? I want him to have this. Ashley, yes, sir. all right, I can feel it. Wilson, I can feel it. Come to me. He's going to say yes, Ashley. I can feel it. That means he's going to meet me in the middle. All right. And then I know he's going to take it, so we can take this down. And I got to put this Peter Max up. And I got to put up a Raphael Abacassis. This is a very rare piece. Canvas. Peter Max. This, yes, is a Statue of Liberty on canvas. Something you do not see very often. They're almost always on paper. I know he's going to say yes, right? And Ashley, if he says yes, I'm going to donate $50 to get Wilson cleaned up. I know you can, Wilson. Uh, this right here is... Statue of Liberty, Peter Max, acrylic on canvas. Key word here is canvas. There was one on first dibs for 19,500. There was another one that sold after uh, long time at, they got an open at 8500 I my guess is it went to 12 or 13,000 retail on uh, unique God bless America on canvas by Peter Max 2008 probably 35 to 40 thousand. It's the first Statue of Liberty I've ever seen on canvas. They only did it for a brief period of time. I'll tell you what. 8,500. Did he confirm to that painting yet? He did? Thank you. Does he, does he want, did, so he took it? Okay. Does he want me to give 50 bucks to the Will Clean Up Wilson Fund? Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to put in charge of the Clean Up Wilson Fund. Giuliani. Yeah. You're in charge of getting Wilson off of the hard drugs. The easy ones are simple. 
What do you mean, no, no, no? You're scared he'll take your drugs? My goodness, so many druggies around here. Wilson? When's the last drug you took? You don't take drugs anymore. <laughs> He's going, I don't take drugs. So this is a very rare canvas, Peter Max. Uh, and 8,500 or get me close. Call Ashley. I also have a great yak of a gum. I got a couple really cool Gregory Wilhelmies left. And I found out tonight, Pretty Boy Floyd is a beautiful dog, but thank to the customers and Ashley relaying it, he's a Pomeranian. Say what? Tom Hanks? All right. Yeah, Wilson. Tom Hanks. You could work with him again, huh? He let you float away, Wilson. He acted like he was going after you. I mean, it was a good acting job. He could have grabbed you. Where'd you end up? Bay of Sh Singapore? Where'd you end up? Getting run over? But never mind, Wilson. So any interest in a very unique Statue of Liberty, God Bless America, no, what is it? Uh, God Bless America, done in 2008, hand embellished by Peter Max. Get me close and I can make this happen. I hear a text, a tweet. Wilson, what do you call a series of tweets? Feeling that for my dad. He was flying TWA once, and they asked him, the stewardess, do you want TWA coffee or TWA tea? I'm Nobody on the Peter Max. Now, what I am going to do Right here, I got a Raphael Abacassis with the high sign, the Jewish sign for life. But this is the surprise of the night. Surprise of the last four or five. This is the surprise of the month. Look at this. We're evil dwells oil on panel by Gregory Wilhelmy the spot of the native sun evil can evil still dwells in and defies the tough and rugged mining town of Butte Montana folks this is one of the most expensive Wilhelmys he has ever done and I'm talking he gets a ton of money look at this when you go to Butte Montana I show you this just to show you how tall Gregory is not a little guy and that's him painting a big portrait in Butte Montana so I'll tell you what Ashley, I got a price in mind. And I also have
Raphael Abacus Cease OK. This, this and Fire on St. Gregory are the two most expensive, and I got the best prices on the planet. Sneeze. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what I'm going to do. Wilson, these are the two most expensive Gregory Wilhelmies I have in the show. My own mother called up trying to buy this one. And I'm going to work her a deal. This, when you look at how Gregory painted this, and what did he say? He painted it, then he put lacquer over it. I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable. This is fire on St. Gregory's Pond. The forest fire has burned for five days. Um, this morning, the flames are slowly dancing in front of the rising sun. These two are the two most expensive Gregory Wilhelmies I have. And I'll tell you what, call me. I want to make some deals. I think Gregory Wilhelmy is one of the greatest artists. He's true to what he believes. He wants to show people how the West has changed. And he's not talking about Las Vegas and a few big towns. He's talking about the small little towns in between. And the top one, five days of forest fires wiping out so much of Montana 12 years ago. And he says, look at St. George's Pond. Look at that. I got prices that I will make very happy. All you got to do is call Ashley or Juliana and say, I'm interested. I will give you prices nobody else can give you. And I'm talking incredible prices. I can feel it, Ashley. Someone's going to call you up about the bottom painting. Where evil dwells. Spelled like evil can evil. I got a price. It's so cheap, Ashley. I'm going to whisper it to you and Juliana. Oh, especially not since you're going to have a fire sale on that top one. <laughs> Wilson, go to the top one. He wants to know if I'm going to have a fire sale. That is funny. That is very funny. Uh, fire on St. Gregory's Pond. Yes, I will for him. Is he interested? Because I'll give him a fire sale price. Call. Yeah, I'm going to give somebody a fire sale price. Who is that? Which customer is that? Mr. Mr.
Especially on one of your work deals. All I got four minutes left. I got some prices. All you got to do is call. I'm sure you're going to be happy. I'm going to give you guys great prices. Look at the one below it, because the one below it is like the most expensive painting I've had here in a many weeks. Got like a $30,000 retail, and I put this up too cheap before, and I'm willing to, uh, I'll tell you what, Ashley, on uh, oh, I can't do it, I can't, so cheap, I can't. $900 where evil dwells. That's so crazy. $900 where evil dwells. And fire on St. Gregory. Watch this. The one above it. Oh, someone's calling right now. The one above it. Six hundred and fifty dollars. She's drinking from the keg again. <laughs> she brings a mini keg in. I'm sitting here razzing Wilson about drugs, and she brought a mini keg. I got three minutes. I just gave you prices, unbelievable. Lillian's lilies. Uh, behind me, can they come up $100? And it's yes, and I'm going to get in trouble. Gregory's going to be mad at me, and Lily's lilies are going to be mad at me. <laughs> and that's a deal and a half I'm giving them. I got two minutes left. And nobody... On that one at 900, unbelievable. What'd they say? Mr. M says. Mr. M says. Sold. sold. So Lily's Lilies are sold. Show them that incredible one, the place where evil dwells, at $900 to open, custom framed. Evil spelled like evil can evil. Unbelievable. And I want to thank you all. What do I have, like two minutes left? 90 seconds. 90 seconds. You can do a lot in 90 seconds. Can you do a one arm push up, Wilson? I used to. Can you hold your breath for 94 seconds? Try right now. <laughs> Folks, I want to thank you, Cameron, too. Uh, call me. Uh, I want to thank everybody. My name is Barry Chapel. I'll be back next week. Got some incredible deals I've been finally closing. So thank you for watching. And I really appreciate your business. I work hard to have the absolute best prices. I don't know if it's good or bad, Wilson, but I've been selling on live TV for 33 years. I quit a tenured track teaching job at Peninsula College in Port Angeles, Washington to do my first show. And I love you guys. Thank you so much. See you next Wednesday. Jack is here tomorrow. Bye-bye. And Buford, don't kick that dog. Don't even think about kicking the dog, Buford. Don't even think about thinking about kicking the dog, Buford. Hey, we love you. Talk to you later. Bye.